Crocodiles are the ultimate predators. Fast, smart, and powerful killers. To most, they're terrifying animals. <laughs> but for one man, they're his passion. Hello. Sean Foggett's aim is to open the UK's first crocodile zoo. That's what I want to do for a living. I want everyone else to love them as much as I do, really. Right, this ain't gone according to plan, OK? But right now, he's got just one week to get his new premises ready for inspection. I don't know, I don't know what to do. In the hope of moving more than 20 lethal crocs in. If anything went wrong and she got hold of me, we could be in big trouble. On a small industrial estate near Whitney, Oxfordshire, crockman Sean Foggett is under pressure. Uh, there's so much to do, but I think it's, it's probably me just go like thinking there's so much to do when actually there's not. Maybe there is. Six months ago, he quit his job as a joiner when the council gave him permission to start turning this industrial unit into a new home for his crocs. Since then, he's worked 24-7 to get his centre off the ground. This is going to be the door in now, and the Siamese crocodiles are being there. You can't see at the moment with all this stuff in the way, but there's underwater view in there. Uh, in this one, we've got the Cuban crocodiles straight in front of us. We've got this whole area will be for, hopefully, a salty. Now he's just one week away from a crucial inspection. The council are coming to check out the first of his new enclosures and decide if they're good enough to move his animals into. And he desperately needs to move them. Right now, they're packed into sheds at the bottom of his garden but he can't afford to keep them there much longer. I'm selling my house to, uh, to fund this, this project, and uh, I've managed to borrow some money to get as far as we've got now, but I need the rest to finish it off. His house sale is due to complete in just 10 days' time, and without that money, his zoo dream will grind to a halt. Everything now hinges on the results of the council inspection. I'm in a real um, predicament, really, as uh, you know, in the fact that I can't move the animals until the inspection's been done here, and I can't sell the house until the crocodiles have been moved. If the council people and the vet turn around and say something needs to be changed or added or whatever before the animals move in, then I've got a few problems on my hands. <laughs> The crocs might still live there, but Sean and his family have already moved out. Wife Lisa and the three kids, Billy, Louie and Shania, now live just round the corner with Sean's brother, Chris. I don't know whether Sean hinted at it, but he kept saying that he was going to have to sell his house uh, in order to um, go further with uh, doing something with the crocodiles. Um, and um, I sort of suggested it, and then he sort of jumped on the idea. But they haven't just moved in. To help them feel at home, Chris has let them completely redecorate. This is our kitchen, which we've done red to match all our red stuff from our old house. And our dining room in here, which looks out nicely onto the trampoline, the kids' favourite place. And this is the living room. We've done some green, not for crocodiles, because I thought it would be nice and fresh. That's Chris's room in there. This is my uh, my room. Not very big, um, but it's, I've got everything that I need in here. He moved downstairs to let us have the big room, but I think also to get away from the children so that he got better sleep. Sean and Lisa get their own room, a rather large room that I used to live in. <laughs> it's got a nice ensuite, And all the kids now, they've all got their own rooms as well. They've woke me up a few mornings um, after I've been out. Oh, I can't handle this. Yeah. Ah, but they're good kids at the end of the day. Yeah. It is a huge sacrifice for the whole family, but they're prepared to do it 
for Sean and his zoo dreams. It was a bit of an upheaval, but I think it's going to be worth it in the end. He's been talking to me about it for years, and so I'm, I'm quite happy for it to help him out so that he can just shut up about it and get on and do it. <laughs> At Unit 31, Sean's time is up. The council inspectors are on their way. Today's really important. It's the day where the animals um, hopefully be moved, but um, first of all, the council have got to inspect, um, along with a vet, and um, check that I can, I've done everything that they need to see here for, in order to issue the Dangerous Wild Animals licence. In the past week, he's put the finishing touches to 10 of the enclosures and he has to move his crocs. The people who bought his house want to move in just four days' time. There's a massive pressure. There's um, solicitors and estate agents um, chasing me all the time. So um, I, I need to get them moved quick. In Britain, anyone keeping yeah. a croc needs a dangerous wild animals license. Although he's held one for more than a decade, Sean needs a new one every time he moves his crocs to a different location. OK, this is where the Siamese crocodiles will be going. Uh, but to get it, his building work has to be up to scratch. ..a sheet of laminated glass on the outside, so there's no way that even if one of the panes does break, they still wouldn't be able to come through the, through the glass. And you've got those bars I can see. Yeah, and the bars across the window as well. Right. It's not just about security. The welfare of the animals is crucial. Next one for the Cuban crocodiles. So we've got a bit more land in this area as they like to spend a bit more time on the land. And when you go in there, there'll be two of you. There'll be always two of us working in there if, if anything needs to be done in the enclosure, yeah. With Sean so busy, Lisa's been looking after the family, single-handed. That's a doggy, isn't it? Doggy. Doggy. Another doggy. And she's worried about the pressure Sean's put on himself. We don't get to see each other much, except when he comes home, has dinner, and then he goes off back there, so you never know when he's going to be here and when he's not. I'm always saying to him that he should ease up and take a step back and let people help, but um, he just gets too stressed out. Now he wants to do the whole thing on his own and just get on with it and make sure it's done, but obviously adds a lot of pressure on him to get it done. The two-hour inspection is drawing to a close. But has he done enough to move his crocs? Yep, all good, all happy. Happy to, for me to move the animals, so there's nothing, no more work I need to do. So, um, let's go and move them, shall we? There's no time to lose. He's got just four days to clear out the house and move 22 crocs out of his sheds. We'll get the more aggressive ones out of the way first. I don't think they're going to appreciate being moved. There's only four days to do it. Sean's been keeping crocs since he was a teenager, and he now has the UK's biggest collection. One of the most aggressive species he has are the highly strung and explosive black caimans. There's a bit of an element of risk involved, but um, with these guys, I don't want to stress them out or stress them out as little as possible. Obviously, catching them anyway is going to stress them out, but uh, what, rather than uh, trying to get a rope round them and dragging them out, this is a full-height enclosure, so I can walk in there. So, basically, I'm going to try and get a towel over, over their heads and um, walk in and pick them up. Covering the croc's eyes with a towel calms them down and means he should be able to catch them without a rope. But it's a risky tactic, and Sean needs help from brother Chris and friend Crossy. So what I'll do is I'll try and... We'll, damp, we'll wet this towel down so it's heavier, and, um, and then put it over his head. If, he, if he's not moving off of there, 
then um, I'll just walk in, grab him, push his head over that way, and then one of you follow me in. You know, if he thrashes, he'll probably, I won't be able to What about pass, are you gonna pass him out, or? Yeah, you, yeah, you pass it to yeah. Yeah. the person out here, and then I'll, I'll keep hold of his head. I should be able to get out of there. Yeah. If he goes in the water, we'll make another plan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Black caimans are particularly territorial. This one is almost two meters long. It could do Sean serious damage. I'll just wet this down, just so it's a bit heavier. And all we do is place it. Oh, that was heavy, isn't it? And Now he knows we're catching him. To get a towel on it now, he's got to climb in. Again. Yeah, if you could push the towel under. Oh. Okay, perfect. That's where I want him. Right, Graham. You stay there. He's just a bit too. No room. <sighs> the other one bash moves and bashes around, we're in trouble. Thank you, my friend. Right, if you can reach his tail, go on. This black caiman is one of Sean's most dangerous crocs, but for him, that's all part of the appeal. They do have the potential to seriously injure you, and that obviously does give you a buzz when you're, when you're having to work with them and all, all these different things involving captive husbandry. Yeah, he'll go straight in the box. But also, you know, because they are dangerous, the more experience you can have, the better you're equipped to deal with different situations. And having to move so many in one go is, um, is a real bonus. Obviously, you don't get to like catch them up very often, so you know it's nice to give them a good uh, check over while we've got them out. So, all we're doing is just uh, cleaning all the bits of old skin and dirt and algae that was um, from the old enclosure and keeps the skin nice and healthy. Exfoliation. Okay, so we're just going to lower him into the water. Yeah? yeah. One, two, three, go. In these big new enclosures, the crocs now have room to swim. See how she's struggling to gain, get her buoyancy, which has always just been in shallow water. This is definitely the deepest water that they've been in, um, possibly even in their lives. It's amazing, actually, how instinct tells them how to, how to control their buoyancy and, and how to swim. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Right, if you get out, because he might come back out here. It'd be interesting to see, now that they can swim, how their muscle tone changes and uh, how it affects their growth and things like that. With nearly every penny from the house sale heading straight to finish the centre, it's hairdresser Lisa who's working to keep the family afloat. 
working constantly all the time, so obviously I have to be at work to bring the money in. So even though Sean's working, yeah, it's a long, it's long and hard days for me. So if I'm not working, I've got to get the kids, and I'm at home with the kids. But yeah, pretty much working with the children all the time. Having started her own hairdressing business seven years ago, she knows only too well what Sean will face trying to launch his zoo idea. The first two years when I took over the salon, I found really tough. Um, just, you don't expect running, the running, actual running in the salon is the easy bit because that's your job and that's what you do, but it's everything that goes with it. But until it starts making money, there's just no let up. It's just a lot of pressure on us until it gets up and going. It's really hard for all of us as a family. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sean definitely appreciates my support and my help. Um, and me just standing by him and letting him follow his dream, I know I know he, he does appreciate it. Although he's so stressed most of the time, he doesn't tell me. <laughs> now, go. With only three days left until his house sale completes, Sean and his team of family and friends work around the clock to move the smaller crocs into the new unit. Yeah, I'm well chuffed for that. They all just look so good in their new enclosures. And at the house, they start taking the old sheds down. It was really strange watching that first shed come down. Well, not watching it, taking it down. Um, it just opens up the garden. You realise how big the garden was. But the biggest one is still standing. It houses his three most dangerous crocs, the Siamese, who need to be out before the new owners move in. Tomorrow. <laughs> 5.30am and Sean is already at his croc unit. He discovered a problem late last night. The reason we're here so early is I had a few... filled the pool yesterday and had, um had a little leak uh, in the pool, so I needed to drain it back off, sort the leak out, and then start to refill it again. It's the enclosure that will house the three Siamese. To be honest, I've not even thought about catching these crocodiles uh, or how I'm going to do it. Just, I've been too busy. He's got to get them out of the house within the next eight hours, and there's nowhere else to put them. But the leak is getting worse. There's a few little water bubbles in there in a different spot from yesterday. How can that be? Now I've got a problem. It's strange, it's just died down there now, isn't it? I don't know, I don't know what to do. Um, drain the water back to where the silicon line is, and... I don't know. I've done that, done that already. Re-silicate, try and... Uh, you, you'd, if we try and break the silicon out, we'll smash the render, I reckon. I don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. We need to go anyway. Otherwise I'll have people waiting. <sighs> Come on then, Nick. Let's go then. Ready? Yeah. Leak or no leak, the three crocs have to be moved out of the shed. And now, Sean's only got seven hours to do it. My croc team in here. <laughs> well, the better half of them are. I just roped in all my mates, and that's what I've done over the years. And they're all, they've all done it before. This time, brother Chris is one of seven men he's called in to help him out. It makes me laugh, because they're all, they're all taking the mickey out of each other yesterday, saying, you wouldn't get up this early, you wouldn't get up early. Bear in mind, they all get up for work. And with the team finally assembled, it's straight down to business. Nick, did you bring that snake up here? Can you go and grab it for us? Yeah, it, I just need it for 
getting this rope round her. But his crop team aren't all trained, and they need to be well briefed. Well, I'm going to go for a, a rope round her, round her neck and underneath one arm. She can use a, she can like swing. Yeah. And so if she starts rolling and spinning around, everyone just like move right back, and then I'll be just there ready to jump on her. No one has ever handled these crocs at this size before, including Sean. When they came to me, they went straight into this enclosure, and they were a handful then, and that was two and a half years ago. So, you know, they've all grown quite a lot since then. This big one here, I'm guessing, is around sort of seven feet in length. The bigger they are, the more dangerous they are. If anything went wrong and she got hold of me or, or any of the other lads, then um, we could be in big trouble. I'm talking myself into getting nervous here. <laughs> I'm much better off just getting in there and doing it. He's using a snake hook to try and get a rope around her. Hold on, Rob, hold on. But Siamese are ambush predators and explode at their victims from the water. She stirred up the bottom. You drain some of the water, Sean? Yeah. Should we drain some of the water? In my after. There she is. Hiding in murky water is a classic croc tactic and means they can launch at their victims unseen. Go back and get a broom from my house. Um, so no, hold on, hold on, Chris. You can hook him quite easily with a broom, so it's, it, it can be quite a useful tool. The thing is, is this is it's just where experience and um, just knowing the animals comes in, isn't it? You know, cause I, she won't come anywhere near me. Um, but that is, obviously, it doesn't mean that she won't. Just nothing's guaranteed, is it? But and I can feel her. Like most crocs, they can attack in a split second. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't anyone else come in here? Oh, don't. He may have her by the tail, but her jaws are still free. Right, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> OK. Hold on. Right, this ain't gone according to plan, OK? Right, she can spin. <laughs> Even with two men sat on her back, no one is safe until her jaws are taped. Seeing Sean putting his hand in the water was a bit... Get your hand out, Sean. <laughs> But he knows what he's doing, so um, although it's a bit worrying, I know he's confident what he's doing and he's relatively safe. One down. Okay. Two to go. It should have been done a lot quicker than that, but, um, you know, with the, the water still being full and being murky, it's, it's just hard to see where she was and 
I think, to be honest, she just got a bit tired in the end, and that's why I was able to grab her tail and pull her out and jump on her. It's taken 40 minutes to catch one Siamese. If he's to get out of the house by 2 p.m., he needs to work faster. For the Foggett family, the love of crocodiles seems to be contagious. Okay. At the local library, Shania heads to the same section every time. Oh, wow. Got one there. There's a crocodile in there, is there? Yeah. Let's have a look. Way up. Let's see, you show me them. Where are they? Go, go! Other kids are all into Peppa Pig, especially oh, the girls wow. her age, but she lies into said. crocodiles. It's a bit different for a little girl, 18 months old. She always says caiman, gator, crocodiles, so she already knows the different types of crocodiles that there are. Even hairdresser Lisa is becoming a convert. At first, when I first met Sean, I didn't really, didn't really like crocodiles um, and I was a bit scared of them but as time's gone on and I've learnt more about them and Sean's so passionate about them I I am starting to like them and we haven't really got much choice anyway you have to like them because especially we need to support Sean and be behind him 100% we need to get involved and learn more about them that's right should we put all these chairs back do you think at the house Sean's about to tackle the biggest and strongest of his three Siamese crocs you just see the teeth on, on this big one. She's definitely got the power to remove limbs, no question. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. He quickly gets one rope on her, but he'll need two to be safe. At well over two metres long, she could easily drag him in. has a bite pressure ten times stronger than a Rottweiler. He daren't tackle her alone. Right, Chris, could you, could you come here? Yeah. Just hold it there. Oh, f***. Right, you can get a tail, Chris. Okay. Oh gosh, she can't get me. If I can let my leg out, Chris. This croc is around 50 kilos of muscle, bone and teeth. Where's my man crossy with that tape? Right, hold on. Hold on. But he's still against the clock, and he's got one left to catch. We'll do the same again. I'll get a rope round him. We'll, we'll pull him that way, and then I'll just... This one, he, he should be all right. I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> Here he is. Ooh, 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 ooh. You get underneath him and, like, raise him up. This time, it's the croc that's in danger. See how lethargic he looked? He's just he's a little bit stressed out and he's, he's had enough already and we've only, we've only just started trying to catch him. It's the worst thing for him, stress. It's the biggest, you know, one of the biggest killers of, um, of captive crocodiles. I don't want it to happen to these. Pure Siamese are an endangered species and Sean's are the only three in captivity in Britain. We're going to go up together on the land. Ready? With a towel over his eyes, the croc quickly calms down. 
yeah, that's, I'm relieved they're all like caught up safe. And no, you know, they didn't get hurt and they weren't too stressed out. Sean's not the only one who's relieved. We have done it before, yeah, but it still doesn't stop your heart pumping every time you do it, I don't think, does it, Rob? No, nah, definitely not. <laughs> I just know which, which end's a business end and which yeah. end's a safe end, so <laughs> I'll be at the safe end most of the time. Let Sean take care of the business. <laughs> I think that we've done that in about two, two and a half hours, so we need to um, now strip this enclosure and then um, hopefully then we'll be ready for the new people to move in. <laughs> And without hesitation, the entire crop team stay to help Sean clear his shed. They're good lads. They've all chipped in and done their part and done their bit, all for nothing. So, but then that's what makes a foreigner. And you know, yeah, I'll, um, I owe a lot of favours. <laughs> in the house, there's one thing he promised Lisa he wouldn't forget. <laughs> Sean left this purposely to the last minute. And I'll tell you, didn't. That's, as you can see, we are very unprepared. <laughs> oh, the safety is best, this is. <laughs> <laughs> the people who are moving in, he's, he wanted to keep this one for a workshop. So um, he could have a nice little workshop in here, except the pool. I don't know what he'd do about that. Maybe they'd like a jacuzzi. Make a nice little jacuzzi, that. That's, that's pretty much it now. Washing machine. Can't forget the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> he finishes with ten minutes to spare. My little note. Ready to go now. Everything's out, everything's done. So, um, yeah, just need to get out, really. <laughs> Money's in the bank, so all done. But the working day is far from over. Back at the unit, there's still the leaky enclosure to deal with. Oh, that's nice and warm. He can't put the crocs in until it's fixed. Well, what we're going to do... Um, is just reseal it again and um, and hopefully hopefully that works we'll drain it to, to just below that con that block and then um, wait for it to dry and then um, reseal it put the crocodiles in here tonight hopefully another healthy dose of silicon will do the trick By the time it dries, it's 5 p.m. The team have been on the go for 12 hours, but they're definitely not finished. We're going to put the crocodiles in, and I've left enough water in that they can fully submerge and they'll be fine in here, if they all get on. See, it's all very well, these leaks, um, but I've still got another problem with they may not all get on. In the sheds, the Siamese were all separated when they started fighting. Go in. Yeah. This is the first time Sean has tried putting them in together. And he's built the enclosure with that in mind. One, two, three. I've tried to design it so that they can get away from each other in the water, break up the sight lines through the water, and also break up the sight lines on the land as well. He looks awesome in there, doesn't he? Putting them together is a gamble, but with so few in the world, Sean's keen to breed from them. It's estimated that there are as few as 250 purebred Siamese left in the wild. It's been a hard day, hasn't it? They're not well known for being difficult to get living together, but then saying that, they've all got their own personalities and they are they like people, you know, they've got their own things that they like and don't like. The final crop to go in is the big aggressive female. Yeah. Right then, ready boys? Yeah. 
We're going to lie on this bit of land in the water. Just watch your um, feet on here. Right. That's all right, that's all right. Don't panic. All right, keep hold of her. With two crocs in the water, everyone's on guard. Right then. Ready then? Right, Bob, you off first. Go. Right, Chris, we're going to go. Hold on. Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. They look OK for now, but he'll need to keep a very close eye on them. Despite a 15-hour day, Sean can't drag himself away from his precious crocs. I know the water level's not, you know, what it should be, but they still look so beautiful, these three. They really are. I do feel like I need a really good sleep. <laughs> I think I'm too tired to be doing cartwheels, but I'm sure I would be. And now I'm going to struggle to leave them tonight. I just like wouldn't have mind sitting here and watching them, but can't do that. Finally moving his crocs in is a big step forward, but there's still more work to do before he can open to the public. Over the next two months, nearly every penny from the house sale is spent finishing his croc centre off. And his 22 animals seem to settle well into their big new enclosures. But though things might look good inside, outside needs attention. There's some roots here, isn't there? And once again, it's family and friends who are here to help Sean out. This time, his mum, Dorothy. As you can see, there's just so much potential around here for people to sit and just enjoy the river, really. Sean wants to have a little natural pathway coming along here, which the plan is, I think, they're going to try and do that today. Uh, move that branch there. I see this as like a planted area would be really good. Um, but that's my ideas, and uh, what Sean thinks is another thing. Sean's single-mindedness is a source of both pride and concern for his mum. In amongst all the building and the rubble, I said, Sean, what if this doesn't work? And he looked at me and said, Mum, he said, at least I will have tried. What can you say to that? But reality bites, and it's costing Sean £300 a week just to keep the cold-blooded crocs warm. With no money coming in, he needs advice on how to cut his enormous heating bills. Brother Chris and Dad Steve both work in the building trade. Okay, at the minute, I've just got infrared, um, infrared heat lamps. But I have looked at um, air source heat pumps. What sort of money are you talking about? Uh, about two and a half grand for three of the enclosures. What, each? No, that's for the three enclosures. Oh, right. And how much cheaper are they to rub? Well, they're 400% efficient. <laughs> so, are they? Oh, yeah. uh, right. Uh, for every one kilowatt used, they produce four kilowatts of heat. So... So it will pay for itself in it's, yeah, quite a short time, it, yeah, potentially. Yeah. Dad Steve has run his own business for the last 20 years. Yeah. He knows that up until now, Sean has got off lightly. He's been really lucky because he's had so many friends and family and other people volunteering to help, to help build and to, uh, to help paint and uh, uh, move the animals that uh, I think that uh, it's helped him to get where he is um, on a shoestring. <coughs> I think he um, sort of had a, a certain budget, I think, which he was trying to work to. Um, but like with all these budgets, they... Uh, uh, tend to go out of control if you haven't got a, if you haven't got a really tight um, handle on it. I'm just concerned that all the pound notes going out the door and. Well, yeah, say it's, it's, it's you, you've got a way of getting the money up front. Mm. 
to buy to, to outlay on things like this because I'm sure it's not just the heating that you've got to worry about. I'm no. sure there's plenty of other yeah. expenses yeah. coming up. It does dawn on me every now and again what, how much I'm taking on and how much of a bigger, pro bigger project than what I ever realised it would, was. Um, but we like challenges. But before Sean gets down to the challenge of making his business pay, he wants to say thank you. He's opening for the very first time to special invited guests only. Believe it or not, about any time now, we've got um, some pe load of people turning up for the open evening. Um, I say open evening, but it's not like for the general public. It's just an evening um, for everyone that's helped out here. And I need to go and light up the front as well. Let's do that. Unit 31 has finally been christened. Around 100 family and friends have been invited to get a first glimpse of crocodiles of the world. Most of them have had a large hand in its creation. From the start, Sean sort of asked me to come down and do a little bit of painting, which ended up a lot. I'm well impressed with what he's done, really, absolutely brilliant. All his time down here is 24 7. And I am just so proud. They need every success. To see him this happy, living his dream, is fantastic. He's just got such imagination. And to see it all come together like this, it's, it's amazing. One guest Sean can't wait to show around is former Dangerous Animals officer Keith Dalton. Yeah, you lost a bit of weight, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you lost a bit of weight. stone He gave Sean his first ever Dangerous Wild Animals licence. He also helped him to find the unit and get the idea off the ground. These are the black caiman. And then the Siamese came December the 3rd, which is when I sold the house. On the Friday morning, I had to move them and get out the house by 2 p.m. It was ridiculous what we had to do. What do you think? I think you've, you've stuck at it, and what you've done is absolutely brilliant, in my eyes, anyway. Thank you. When I first saw this as an empty shell, you are know, thinking, OK, how is he going to work this? Uh, but it's come to fruition through his hard work, really. This is what it's all about, isn't it? I can get used to this, definitely. I really could. Everyone's really chuffed and pleased. I feel really overwhelmed. It's just going to take off, I'm sure it is. Yeah. But amidst the celebrations, it's Dad Steve who brings Sean back to reality. What's next? Um, the gift shop. I'll be um, stripping that out and painting it tomorrow. Right. Only to make it more presentable, because birthday parties are going to come in that door rather than the top door. One of the things I've always said to him right from the start is that no matter what you do, and I know it's a passion, but at the end of the day, it's a business, and you have to make money. Next time on Crocman, Sean battles to get bookings and make his business pay. It doesn't just run on thin air without money coming in, as there is no crocodiles of the world. And brother Chris bites off more than he can chew. She does look like she's getting ready to pounce. Chris, she's going to come. <laughs>